When I was growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, there was two different styles of video game. There was the home console releases, stuff like Halo on the original Xbox or Final Fantasy X on the PlayStation 2. These big, crazy experiences that were meant to be sat down with a controller in your hand, beating it on the biggest TV possible. But separately, there was handheld stuff. Now, growing up, I was completely obsessed with the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advanced, because they were these separate, incredibly interesting RPGs and action games and puzzlers that were meant to be a tinier, more chill experience. But what's been very bizarre about modern gaming is that now, Console games are pretty much all we have. I, I mean, I guess you can technically play stuff on your cell phone like Diablo Immortal, but if you're actually a console gamer looking for a full-blown experience that you can take on the go, these don't really exist in the same way. I mean, even Sony that actually made a lot of handhelds all the way up until, you know, about 10 years ago when they stopped after the PlayStation Vita flopped, there's been this weird gap. Well, bizarrely enough, now PlayStation, after such a long hiatus, is attempting to take another crack at it, but the PlayStation Q, it's not really winning me over, but I want to talk about some stuff like the price point, some leaked specifications, and why it just seems like this is a bad idea that I don't think anybody is really going to pick up. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, first and foremost, let's take a look at it. So this is officially announced. This has been rumored for a couple months and shockingly is actually real. Sony's new handheld is just called Q. Uh, some people are saying the final name of it is going to be like the Q Lite. Still a very bizarre name. Now, this has an 8-inch screen, and it streams your PlayStation 5 games. Sony's Project Q is a portable device that's coming later this year that lets you remote play games over your Wi-Fi from your PlayStation 5. Now, this is essentially an external screen. Uh, you still have to have the console. You still have to have the games. It's just a way to play it when you're not in your TV, you know, or maybe, you know, play it if somebody else is using the TV or something like that. Now, initially, I think I'm interested in this from a conceptual level because I do do a lot of grinding. Uh, I play a lot of big RPGs and MMOs and stuff actually on my PlayStation 5, both things like Final Fantasy 14 with my friends pretty much every single day and even stuff now like ARPGs, Diablo 4, completely obsessed with it. The idea of being able to pick up a handheld and immediately play it is at least interesting, but it's also, it, it's something that just doesn't feel like the actual handheld experience that a lot of us desired, especially because weirdly enough, this part of it that just seems super bar, the, the screen is okay. I think the fact that it's like a split in half dual sense controller is okay. The biggest issue is that now they've leaked the battery life and it sounds like the battery life is about three to four hours. Now, here's what's weird about this is that when I think about handheld gaming, as a person with a massive handheld gaming collection, I've got hundreds of PSP games and stuff. I'm not like some sort of hater. I think the weirdest part is that the portability of it is the appeal. I actually collect all sorts of handheld devices. I think being able to game on the go is great. There's been these cool little Chinese things that have been coming out over the last couple of years. Like this is the MiU Mini Plus. Uh, they sent this to me and I've been playing the heck out of it. It's like a little emulator device for less than a hundred bucks. It's got triggers. It lets you play PlayStation games. The thing is, I think that these are an incredibly important part of gaming in general is, all right, you're hanging out with some friends. You want to just be able to kill 10 minutes. You're sitting on a bus. You're waiting for your plane to take off. Having the ability to play a game instantly is nice. And that's something that previously PlayStation did do. The PlayStation Vita is incredible. And I guess I'm also a little bit confused because what's extra strange about this to me is that it's coming out in an era where we do actually have other companies that are at least selling something you can play on the go. Like the Nintendo Switch, I 99% play it on my TV, but when I have like a friend over and we're just sitting there having drinks or something, it's cool that I can bust out my Switch and just randomly play stuff or show them some Katamari Damacy or something like that. I mean, there is also, of course, things like the Steam Deck but the thing is that when I think about the Steam Deck or I think about the Nintendo Switch, as good as those are, 
They're also expensive. You know, it's, you know, $500 is what I spent on my Steam Deck, $300, $350 is what I spent on my Nintendo Switch. When we first heard rumors of the Q Lite, it sounded like it was going to be very cheap, probably like 199 bucks. I assumed that it would have some sort of additional functionality. The fact that it only works over Wi-Fi, according to the reports, that's definitely something that feels like a big deal breaker. Like, I have about 700 PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games. I mean, I am the target consumer for this. I play RPGs, I like stuff on a tiny screen, I'm ready to do this, and even I am saying, man, $200 for a device that can't leave my house is a very, very strange bit, because technically, even now, there is a way to play PlayStation games on the go. There is already sort of a version of the Q-Lite. You can try out remote play. I've been testing it over the course of the last couple of weeks, and I'll be honest, it's not really super good. So you can get this thing called a backbone, or you can just sync up a PlayStation 5 controller to your phone. You have one of these things that you can easily connect to your uh, little cell phone here and just boot up remote play. This is a backbone. There's an officially licensed backbone that's going to be white for the PlayStation. But my issue is that it, it doesn't actually feel playable. Like, if you're playing stuff, a game that is running on the hardware, it's going to be a seamless experience. Even big graphical games that look really crazy that happen to barely run on my Steam Deck... It's cool to play them, even if they don't have the best frame rate or best resolution. It's still cool that it is possible to play that on my Steam Deck anywhere. Whereas, I guess the weirdness of remote play is that it just feels like it has all these extra hurdles of like, okay, fast internet, good mobile data, you gotta have infinite mobile data plan, you gotta have a cell phone with at least a halfway decent screen, you gotta buy this $100 controller. E even this is 100 bucks. <sighs> The Q light is just such a weird thing because yes, it is technically your remote play compartmentalized. It's your remote play all done and done. Oh God, let me, let me mute freaking Jim Ryan. Look at this thing though. That like, it's just super bizarre to me that it doesn't have any sort of standalone functionality. The fact that this is just a machine that streams stuff from your console. It is just a screen with a controller. I don't know. I'm kind of rambling because I'll be honest, I'm still trying to digest it. This is still just such a strange thing where like, I should be excited for this. I should think this is cool. I am the mobile gamer, the guy who plays stuff on the go, who loves his PlayStation. And even I am saying, what the fuck, mate? <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to talk about this because honestly, we're probably going to get a price point soon. I think it's going to be 199 bucks. And I think it's going to utterly bomb. And I think that PlayStation is going to go, oh my God, mobile gaming is dead. And they're uh, drawing the wrong conclusion. Xbox, maybe try your own Nintendo Switch at some point. I, I would like to see Xbox. It seems like uh, PlayStation and Xbox are really going full force on the Steam Deck. And that's cool. I don't know. Give us, uh, give us a little bit more. Give us, a, give us those actual ported games yourselves. Okay, well, these are just some off the cuff thoughts. What do you guys think about the Project Q? Is this actually a cool accessory or just a weird PlayStation dud? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Oh my god, I have like 8 billion fucking Game Boys all over my desk. I don't know why I'm cussing so much today. What is what is wrong with me? I'll be honest, I didn't sleep last night. I was up playing Katamari Damacy until 3 a.m. with my friend in that video earlier. Oh my god, Liz, why did we not sleep? Oh, we didn't sleep enough. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.